So if you're working on your walk-in stunts, the walk-in stunt is a fantastic stunt that helps to build a lot of strength and coordination for partner stunning. A lot of times guys will use this as an intro to start working on higher level toss uh, stunts and so do our girls. We have a lot of girls that can co-ed stunt where they're picking one girl up overhead. And so the walk-in is a very, very effective tool um, that can be used by uh, partner stunting um, for everyone. So in this video, an athlete sent us a video of his walk-in to Liberty and asked how can we clean this up? Now he does hit the stunt, which I'm super happy to see, but there's always room for improvement. So if you're working on walk-in stunts or want some pointers on how to make yours better, stick with us. All right, so let's take a look at his walk-in up to Liberty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five, seven, eight. One, three, five. All right, so as we can see, again, he hits a stunt. It's not a bad stunt, but there are some small things that we can tweak to make it even better. First thing, before we get into these exercises, the one thing that I would, I would comment on is I feel like the guy and his top girl are a little too far apart um, on the entry. Now we do want to have a bit of a, of, a, of a walk kind of step in as far as a timer um, and also to help to generate some momentum into the stunt. But personally, I feel like they're a little too far apart and I would like to see them start a little bit closer together. So in a building strength for the walk-in, there are a few exercises that we want to utilize to help strengthen the muscles that are most appropriate to make this a more solid and a faster skill. So the first thing we're gonna address is in the lower body. Now, when we're hinging down and we're going to stand back up, that mimics kind of a crossover between a squat and a deadlift. For our first exercise, I'm gonna recommend this athlete performs a sumo deadlift. The sumo deadlift is a variation where our legs are a little bit wider and we're hinging down between us. So for this, we would take a weight and place it in front of us with our feet slightly wider and toes turned slightly out. From here, we're gonna hinge forward, we're gonna grab the weight and explode up quickly through the hips, feeling it through the hamstrings and the glutes. This exercise, like the rest we're gonna talk about, are gonna be done from eight to 12 repetitions for anywhere from two to four sets. Now, additionally, with the sumo deadlift, we can also work on what's called an RDL, or Romanian deadlift. That is a very similar exercise, but instead of having our feet out wider, we're actually gonna bring the feet in a little bit more narrow and keep the hips high. For this activity, we're again gonna start with the weight directly in front of us, our feet a little bit closer together, and our legs not quite locked out, but a little bit more straight than our standard deadlift. From here, we're gonna send the hips back, and then we're going to grab our weight and then stand up aggressively, shooting the hips back forward. Again, we should feel this mostly in the glutes and hamstrings, slight bit in the lower back muscles, but again, should not be overloading the low back. Now, working through that middle part where we're actually bringing our girl up off of the hips and up overhead, we can utilize what's called a curl to press. Now, this can be done with dumbbells. It can also be done with bands. Um, very, very easy to, to reproduce. So for this, we would start in that somewhat squatted position, so with our knees slightly bent, with our weight in front of us. From here, we're gonna curl the weight up, and then as that gets more comfortable, a variation of that would be all the way through kind of one movement where we would curl and then directly up overhead. But to start with, we can separate those movements to build bicep strength and to build shoulder strength. When we're doing a walk-in stunt, the last thing we want to do is let our arms drop so that we're having to curl our top girl all the way with our arms. We want to make sure that we're strong enough to maintain that bicep load or that, that elbow bend here so that our legs are driving her up to the top and not curling her to the top. So by working on bicep strength, we can make sure that we're strong enough to maintain that position from the bottom so that as we stand, we're already driving her to the top. And for our last exercise, we're gonna do a ball overhead toss. Now this is an exercise that's very similar to a kettlebell swing, except by using a weighted ball, we're actually able to throw overhead. Now this is a fantastic tool to really maximize how much power you can generate from between the legs and up overhead. To do this, you would grab a sand ball or a, a ball that you can throw that's a little bit heavier, some sort of weight uh, that you can throw overhead and let it hit the ground without damaging either the ball or the object or damaging the floor. So we have a video in the past that we talked about where we did you know, create your own sand ball where you just fill a, a couple of trash bags full of sand and then duct tape it really tightly. So you can grab that or if you have a heavier ball that you can throw, that's perfect as well. So for this, what we do is we'd start with that ball between our legs. We're going to hinge and then from there, explode as fast as we can, reaching way overhead and trying to throw the ball up over us as far behind us as we can. This really maximizes total explosive power 
using our hips and, and our glutes uh, because we don't have to control where the weight's going. So it really uh, gives us the capability to um, explode as much as we can to create as much power as we can. Once we start to get comfortable with this movement, it'll help us to realize how much power we actually have. And then from there, we can start to coordinate um, and control how much power we use. So for this, this is because this is a max effort ex uh, exercise, think about it in that lower rep range. We're gonna shoot for somewhere between five and eight reps on this, really taking our time. Um, and again, for this, you can perform two to, two to four uh, sets of five to eight reps, focusing again on maximum power, not necessarily high volume repetition. The one last thing I would like to touch on is for our top girl, make sure when you are leaning over your guy, you want to make sure that you're giving a good push as well so that he's not having to do all the work. But on our guy portion, if we can take these exercises and add them into our workout routine, it will dramatically increase your power and speed off the bottom, will help you to coordinate uh, getting that stunt up over your head faster, and will also help to make it more clean and more safe. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Three, five, that was a good one. Hey guys, I hope these exercises are beneficial for you if you're working on walk-ins. I know walk-ins are one of the first stunts I learned and uh, I did them all the way even through college. Really had fun time with walk-ins because you can really get uh, creative with those and they transition a lot into things like pyramids and stuff like that. If you'd like more videos on exercises that can make you a better stunter, click on the link above. And if you haven't already, click on my face, click the subscribe button so you know when we come out with videos that can help you to be a better cheer athlete. And if you haven't already, smash the like button. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm thing that, that helps us to do all that stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. So, we'll catch you in the next video.